Colin O'Keefe checking in for LXBN TV. There may not be a more controversial topic in the country right now than vaccination policies, but as the stakes grow higher, this becomes an increasingly more serious fight. To discuss what schools can and can't do when it comes to vaccines, they're really on the front lines of this topic, we bring in attorney Gwen Zatoon. She's based in Connecticut with Shipman and Goodwin, an author on their blog, School Law. Uh, Gwen, first off, this is a question that comes up a lot. Is it legally possible for schools to completely forbid children who are not vaccinated from attending schools? I know personal belief exceptions are kind of uh, a big, big thing nowadays, but is it possible for a school to step in where lawmakers kind of have not yet? Thanks for having me, Colin. Um, it's an excellent question and, you know, student safety is really of the utmost concern for everyone and that's parents and schools alike. Um, it's a difficult topic. The brief answer is it depends. Um, it's really uh, depends on state law and what the state law says. The, the U.S. Supreme Court has said that states, it's within their police power to require immunizations of students attending schools irrespective of religious beliefs um, and possibly other exceptions. But then it's up to the states as to what they want to regulate. Um, all 50 states do require immunizations of students um, with varying exceptions permitted. Um, so really the bottom line is a school's not permitted to violate their own state law. Um, they would have to follow whatever that law is um, and any guidance that they've been given from either their State Department of Education or their State Department of Public Health, um, as well as any of their school board policies that they have um, on this topic. And again, we all want to make sure that our students are safe, um, but we also have to comply with state laws. And you know, it's really up to the legislature at that point uh, to determine whether exceptions will be permitted to a general requirement that students be immunized. That makes sense. And then, you know, of course, you know, as the stakes grow higher and there are, you know, different types of outbreaks popping up, is there mm -hmm. a right way for schools to do this? I imagine, you know, you've written on this subject. I'd imagine you've probably spoken to schools about it. Um, sure. What's your recommendation on keeping the school safe and, and staying legally compliant as well? Absolutely. And this really goes for, for a variety of other topics as well, and that is stick to those uh, state laws, your board policies, and any guidance you've been given from the Department of Health, the Department of Education, um, oftentimes, you know, schools, as in other places, are very busy places. We want to make sure that we've um, followed all those rules to the T. Um, I know in Connecticut, we have guidance from our State Department of Public Health that allows certain students to be excluded from school if there are outbreaks um, of certain um, vaccine uh, diseases that can be vaccinated against. Um, and there are specific definitions of outbreak and all other things as well. So a lot of research has to be done. But really the safest thing um, until and un unless and until the legislature makes changes in this particular state is to follow those rules as closely as possible and make sure that upon admission um, schools are checking immunizations to make sure that students are only admitted if they are either immunized or fall under one of the very specific exceptions to that rule. Um, the other, another side of this, and this goes to your first question as well, is um, the McKinney-Vento Act um, uh, discusses home, students who are considered homeless. Um, and there's an exception in that law also that requires schools to admit students without record of immunization if they are considered homeless under that law. Um, and, and there are a lot of other rules that come with that about how to assist in obtaining immunizations. But that's another rule that should be followed closely. Um, by schools to to assist in in the safety of all students. That makes sense. And you may, you raise a great point. You know, a lot of research, you know, a lot of thought has gone into these laws and these policies. So it's really important to to follow those policies and to, and to of course just obey the law on the uh, on the most basic level. Uh, Absolutely. Once again, that was Gwen Zatoon of Shipman and Goodwin. For more of her insight on this subject and others in the school law space, I, I imagine, I'm sure she's going to be writing about this subject even more in the future as well. Be sure to visit ctschoollaw.com. Thank you for joining me today, Gwen. Thanks, Colin.